In today's video, we're going to build a flexible targeting system for abilities in Unity. We're going to create different strategies for how abilities decide on their targets. For example, we'll handle self-targeting for buffs and heals, area targeting where we drop an effect on the ground, and projectile targeting where the spell finds its target on impact. Each strategy plugs into the same framework so we can mix and match them without rewriting code. By the end, we'll have a clean, extensible system that makes it easy to add new targeting styles for any ability we want. Let's get into it. To implement our targeting system, we're going to use the strategy programming pattern. Let's start by defining a base abstract class we'll call targeting strategy. Each strategy will hold a reference to the ability that owns this targeting strategy and a reference to the targeting manager. The targeting manager is a component that will live on the player and it will be responsible for updates while the player is choosing targets. We can also track a boolean is targeting, which lets us know if the system is currently in the middle of targeting or not. We can expose that through a read-only property called is targeting. Now let's define an abstract method called start. This is where concrete strategies will initialize themselves and they'll take in the ability and the targeting manager as params. We can use virtual methods for two optional hooks, update and cancel. Some targeting strategies will just fire immediately, so we won't be able to cancel them and they won't need updates. Next, let's have a look at the targeting manager. This component is going to live on the player, and it's going to keep track of whatever targeting strategy we're currently using. The targeting manager will need to know about your input system so that the player can choose targets, and a camera so that we can do some ray casting. Let's also keep a private reference to whichever targeting strategy the player is using right now. In our update method, let's check to see if we actually have a current strategy. And if the is targeting property is true, then we can call the update method of the current strategy. Finally, let's add two simple methods for managing the active strategy. We can set the current strategy, or we can clear it by setting it to null. Because targeting manager is a mono behavior, let's move it into its own file with the correct name. Now let's implement our first concrete targeting strategy, self-targeting. Self-targeting can take effect immediately, and it doesn't require any input from the player. In the start method, you could store those references to the ability in the targeting manager in case you need to make this more complex in the future. But by design, we know that our targeting manager is going to live on the player. If you followed along with our effects video last week, you know that the recipients of effects in this system implement the eye damageable interface. So if we find a valid eye damageable on the player, we can immediately call the execute method of this ability and pass in the player as the target. Let's make sure this is going to work before we implement more complex strategies. If we come into the definition of what an ability is, we already have a list of all the effects that will be applied to a given target. But let's add a section to expose the actual targeting strategy that we want to use for this ability. Then we can add a new public method target. Our target method can make sure that we've actually chosen a targeting strategy. And if so, it can call the start method of that strategy, passing in this ability and a reference to our targeting manager. Now we had another class that was managing all of the abilities we would put on a hotbar. Let's make sure that every time we have this ability caster component, we also have a targeting manager component, and we can keep a reference to that targeting manager as well. Now, previously, the system was just executing an ability from the hotbar onto the first enemy that it would find. But now, each ability has a public target method that we can call, and we can pass in a reference to that targeting manager. This makes our old cast method obsolete, but we might want to have another cast method just to abstract away some of these details. So here, we're still going to want to call the abilities target method, but we might want to do a few other things. For example, we could still play the sound effect that's associated with this cast. Then in our update method, we can just call this new cast method. So let's do a little bit of cleanup while we're here. We don't need these commented out lines. And while the old cast method is now obsolete, we should preserve the logic that was creating our VFX for each ability. From a domain perspective, it makes more sense to move that logic into the ability itself. So let's remove this old cast method and come back to the ability class. Down at the bottom, let's add a new method. We can call it handle VFX. We'll get a reference to our target as a mono behavior. And then here, we'll just implement the same logic that we just removed from the other class. If we had set some casting VFX in the inspector, we can instantiate them. And if we had set some running VFX, we can instantiate them and then set them to destroy after a certain amount of time. Then we can call this method anytime we execute this ability. Well, that's all we have to do. Let's jump back into Unity and make sure this is working. So on my player game object, I already have my player ability caster component and my targeting manager. And in the targeting manager, I've set references to the camera and my input reader. The ability caster knows about the targeting manager, but we need to pick a targeting strategy. Right now there's only one, so let's choose self-targeting. 
and there's nothing else to do but press play. So I only have one ability in my hotbar system, so I'm just going to press one. And of course, it's working just as it was before. Player starts taking some damage and the VFX are spawning just as we expect. Now let's jump back into code and build something more complex where our abilities can handle multiple targets. Our ability system as it exists right now is meant to affect one target at a time. Now we want to upgrade things so that each ability can generate many effects. And to do that, we're going to use the factory programming pattern. So let's have a new interface here. I effect factory that just creates effects. So what would that look like in practice? Well, we could have a damage effect factory that just creates damage effects. Let's make it serializable so that we can expose it to the inspector. And then we could have some default properties for each damage effect, such as the damage amount. Then we just need to implement the create method. Here, we're just going to return a new damage effect based on the factory settings. This also means that we can change our damage effects from being a reference type to being a value type. So let's change this class to be a struct. But that does mean that we can't have initializers. So let's remove that default value for damage amount here in the effect. That will significantly reduce the amount of heap allocations coming out of our factories. Now let's page down to the bottom and we'll do the same thing for our damage over time effect. We can implement a new class damage over time effect factory where we have a default duration, tick interval, and damage per tick, similar to what we were doing before. But then we implement a create method that just returns a new effect. And here we just set those factory values. We can change the effect to be a struct again and remove the initializers. So now we've got factories that can pump out multiple effects. Let's come back to our ability class. Instead of each ability having a list of effects, it will now have a list of effect factories. So now we'll be able to generate unique effects for every target that's affected by the ability. Last week, our enemies had a special apply effect method, but we can make this a lot simpler. Instead, for each effect, we're going to call the factories create method to get a runtime effect. Then we just need to apply the effect to the given target. Our enemies already have an apply effect method, but let's make that part of the iDamageable interface so that all iDamageables in our game can use the same method. Okay, that was a small but significant refactoring, so why don't we go back into Unity and have a sanity check. Since we're now exposing factories instead of effects, we need to make an update here to what's serialized in the inspector. So the first ability on our hotbar is still going to have two effects, but this time they're going to come from factories. So let's make sure that it works. It's working exactly the same as before. Of course, the real test is going to be when we have multiple targets. So let's go back into Rider and implement our AOE targeting. So let's build something a little bit more advanced, an AOE targeting strategy. Let's add a prefab, which will be our visual preview when the player is aiming the ability. Then we can have a float radius, which we could default to five. And finally, a layer mask, and we can just use the default layer, which is one, or set something different in the inspector. When we instantiate our prefab, let's store it as a game object we can call preview instance. Now, for the start method, the first thing to do is store references to the ability and the targeting manager. But in this strategy, we also need to manage state. So let's set the is targeting flag to be true. Then we need to let the targeting manager know that this is the current strategy so that we can keep it updated. Then let's make sure that we have an AOE prefab assigned and we can create a preview instance just above the ground using instantiate. This will give us the visual marker that will follow the pointer. And finally, let's make sure that the targeting manager has a reference to an input system because we want to be able to react to input events. For example, here I want to take action every time the player clicks. You can see in my input reader class, click is a unity action of type raycast hit. If you want to learn how to abstract input using scriptable objects, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So our onclick handler is going to receive a raycast hit. First, we can check if we're still targeting. If not, we can ignore the click. If we are, we can run a physics overlap sphere at the hit point with the radius we defined earlier. This will give us all of the colliders inside the circle, and we can convert them to components and filter out anything that doesn't implement eye damageable. Then for each valid target, we can execute the ability on each target one by one. Finally, we can call the cancel method to exit targeting mode cleanly. Now we could call cancel anytime during the targeting. And essentially we want to do the inverse of start. We set is targeting to be false. We can clear the current strategy on the targeting manager. For the preview instance, you could either destroy it or maybe you want to cache it for later. And finally, we can make sure that we unsubscribe from the click event. Now, what about moving our preview instance around? Well, let's make a helper method to get the world position. 
If the targeting manager doesn't have a camera assigned, we can just return vector 30. Otherwise, we can cast a ray from the current mouse position into the world. If the ray hits something on the ground layer, we can return the hit point. If it doesn't, we return zero. We can use this helper method in our update. Here we can check two things. Are we actually targeting and do we have a preview instance? If both are valid, we can move the preview instance to follow the mouse. Again, just a little bit above the ground. If you're new to the channel, add is an extension method that's part of our Unity Utilities library. Now we're done writing code, let's try it out. I'm going to leave everything the same, except I'm going to come over to targeting strategy. And here we're going to select the drop down and choose AOE targeting strategy. And now we have some new options. My ground layer is actually set to ground, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to leave the radius at five and I'm going to drag in a prefab that I've got called magic circle. With these things in place, we can just go into play mode and try it out. I still only have one ability configured, so I'm going to press one. Right away, we can see and move around the preview instance. Clicking here affects the targeting dummy and the player, but let's try them one at a time. Of course, my enemy is just about out of health. So far, so good. We've got a nice extensible system we can work with, and we can use abilities on as many targets as we want, and even stack them up. Why don't we take this a little bit further with some projectiles? Each projectile could have a projectile controller that will move it around. Let's keep a reference to the ability that spawned this projectile and a field for its movement speed. The initialize method can set everything up. It'll take in the ability and the speed and store them locally. For now, we'll make sure that this projectile is destroyed after five seconds if it doesn't hit anything. But in the future, we could implement some object pooling. In update, we can move the projectile forward every frame by translating it along its forward axis. Then we can handle collisions in on trigger enter. First of all, let's ignore any collisions with objects tagged as player. Next, we can check if the collider we hit has a component that implements I damageable. If it does, we can store it as target. We then call ability.execute on that target to apply the effects of the ability. Finally, let's clean up the projectile right after the impact. Now let's add another targeting strategy, projectile targeting. Here we don't need to choose targets per se, but instead we spawn a projectile that will find its targets by colliding with something in the world. Let's start with some public fields, one for a prefab that will fire and one so that we can define the speed. In the start method, we can store references to the ability and the targeting manager. Then we can check to see if the prefab was assigned. If it is, we can calculate the direction to fire it. We take the camera's forward vector, flatten it by setting Y to zero so that it doesn't shoot up or down, and then normalize it. Then we can create a rotation from that direction using quaternion.lookRotation. We can instantiate the projectile at the player's position and give it that forward rotation. This will make sure that the projectile launches straight out in the direction of the camera. Then let's grab the projectile control on the new object and call initialize, passing in the ability and the speed. This ties the projectile back to the ability so it knows what to execute when it hits something. Nice and simple. Let's go try it out. So I've already chosen a fireball prefab to use. I'm just going to add the projectile controller to it. It has no public settings. They are all set by the targeting strategy. Then we can come back to our player and change up our ability. So now, instead of using an AOE targeting strategy, I'm going to choose projectile targeting. We need to drag in the fireball prefab that I want to use, and then we can try it out. So let's zoom out and jump into play mode. Let's see how good my aim is. Couple direct hits. He doesn't last very long with two poison dots. Why don't we come out of play mode, jump over to the enemy, and we'll give him 3000 health. I dropped the damage down a bit too. Now he should be able to survive for quite a while. So this seems pretty good. The effects are all taking place independently. I think the next logical thing to do would be to implement object pooling. Then maybe we could build our UI and then tie in with an animation system. Now, you know what? For now, this poison effect seems a little strange with the fireballs. Why don't we change the actual ability effects to something a little more fire themed? Maybe we need some burning sound effects as well. One brick at a time. That's all I've got for you today. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of how you can build a flexible targeting system to tie into your ability systems. Don't forget we've got a new video every Sunday on this channel exploring another intermediate or advanced Unity game dev topic, so make sure you hit the bell. And don't forget to join us on Discord where there's lots of other game devs just like you helping each other develop their games and solving problems. Hit that like button or drop a comment to boost the algorithm and I'll throw another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.